that. So our fourth section is how does it size up to others? I might have mentioned that the controller market right now is quite saturated. It's got a whole bunch of alternatives. You can get different colored official Microsoft controllers. You can get third party ones. You can get whatever you want. You can get cheap ones for about three, 400 Rand. You can get expensive Microsoft Elite V2s for 5,000 Rand. There is so much choice in the market that it's difficult to place a new controller when it gets released, especially when it doesn't have any direct competitors. It's difficult for for you to, well for, for me to identify a direct competitor for this controller because it exists in a slightly intermediate ground, I'd say. Whereas previously you'd have the standard Microsoft controller and everything below that as the entry level controllers and anything above it as the high end controllers, which were the SCUF controllers, the Microsoft Elite V1 controllers and the Wolverine Ultimate controllers. This now exists almost in a gap between the high end and the default. It's a, if you can call it an entry level high end controller. Um, in terms of features, it feels a lot closer to the high end controllers like the, the Wolverine V1s and the Elites than it does feel closer to the standard controllers like the standard Microsoft series controllers. Um, it has the extra buttons it has the trigger stops it has the the razor build quality which is something you can't again you can't quantify the build quality of something it's something that you you develop over time i have a few other razor products i've had them for a few years i've used them almost every day and they're still um, doing amazingly well they're not falling apart um, i haven't had any complaints or reasons to you know send them back for warranty exchanges or repairs so um, it might not have the, the over the top features of the, the Elite V2, but it has the few features that you will need and it does have the, the Razer build quality to go behind it. While Microsoft controllers and other cheap controllers do offer the wireless alternatives um, and often they come filled with, with fancy tech, you know, like the, the RGB strips and trigger stops and, and certain things that, that the high end controllers have, um, they don't have the, the build quality reputation to go with it. So while you can go on to, you know, bid or buy or Amazon or most of these websites or even take a lot and get um, cheap third party controllers um, from brands that are starting to get a bit of a name for themselves, even even such as PDP, um, which are, are great entry level controllers for the for the price. Even those which have a great name just do not have the build quality and the feel that you'd get from a from a, a, a Razer product. It's a very unique gap, and I think Razer have done a very good job here in finding a, a niche in the market, um, in a market that previously was getting saturated with entry levels and high ends. We're now finding a, a bit of a hybrid of the two as the entry level high end controllers. So. I'm going to give this an 18 out of 20 as far as its identity in the controller market. It stands out, I feel, in that it offers high-end features at a low-end cost, which we'll get to next. <music> Lastly, we get to the price of the product. It's a pretty statistical analysis comparing it to the actual retail prices of other products. How much does it cost? How much do its competitors cost? Um, is it worth it? So let's just get right to the facts. This product retails recommended retail price and actual retail price right now, as of this review video, is 2000 Rand. You can get it from a few different retailers, take a lot, um, the Eve Tech kind of people, um, BT Games, the, the usual kind of suppliers. Um, and if we go down the list, we start seeing that the original Microsoft Xbox One controller you can pick it up now for about 750 Rand. The brand new Microsoft series level of controller, which I don't personally have for the review video here, but um, I've looked it up and it, you can get one for probably about 1400 Rand, 1400 Rand, depending where you, you shop around. Um, you can get a, an entry level Xbox One controller like the PDP versions, um, like some a couple of other brands 
uh, for about six to seven hundred rand as well. Um, and then we moved to the the Microsoft Elite V2 controller, which uh, retails for about four thousand five hundred rand. The Wolverine Ultimate Edition, the original model, which um, you can probably find now for about three thousand, three thousand, maybe two hundred, four hundred rand, or the Microsoft, I mean, sorry, or the Razer Wolverine Tournament Edition, which was the stripped down, almost direct competitor to the Wolverine V2, which at the time retailed for about 2,000 or 2,200 Rand. So it's, as far as the pricing is, is concerned, it's almost a direct competitor to the Wolverine Tournament Edition, the first generation stripped down version of the Ultimate. But when you look at the features that it offers compared to that original model, it is a little bit better. When you line it up next to what Razer claim is its direct competitor, which is the Microsoft Series controller. Basically what Razer is saying is that this controller is designed to replace a standard Microsoft Series controller. It has all the features, the share button that the new that the, the new series controllers have but it does have the extra features of the programmable buttons the trigger stops the extra grip the game chat party balance button over here it stands out to its competitor while it does cost about 25 percent more this is about 2000 rand the standard xbox series controller is about 1400 rand it offers tech that you're going to find in three or four thousand rand controllers you look at the the high-end controller of the wolverine ultimate and then you look at the, the entry-level razor controller of the the wolverine v2 and it has some of the best features from this at a much reduced cost i can overlook the things that they took away from this controller for the fact that you're paying almost half the price of this controller the original wolverine ultimate edition for this new wolverine v2 edition over here i can overlook quite a lot of the design decisions because of the price at 2000 rand i feel like this is a almost a no-brainer and if i personally was looking for a replacement controller or even a, a primary controller say i wasn't happy with the original microsoft series controller um, and i wanted something a bit fancier i would without a doubt recommend this controller here i don't feel like i could actually mark down the pricing on this controller there is nothing i can penalize it for it has high-end features it has razor build quality it has one or two features that i might have changed personally but then that might have resulted in the price being even higher so for the pricing of this product it gets a perfect score of 20 out of 20. there is nothing i would change Obviously, if I could make it cheaper, I would make it cheaper, but I understand Razer and if, if Microsoft can justify charging uh, 1,400 Rand for their standard controller, I definitely feel like Razer is almost giving you a discount at the fact that you're only paying 600 Rand more than the standard controller for so much, so much more controller than the Wolverine V2. So a perfect score, 20 out of 20 for the pricing.